Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys how we can output different audio devices into separate audio channels for your streaming and recording of videos. So if we go up to settings and file settings, and then we go down to output, you can see that streaming selects one of six audio tracks to actually feed to the internet for your live stream to Twitch or YouTube. By default, your audio devices output to all six audio tracks anyway, so this is only relevant when we do a little bit more setup, but if you need to change which audio track you use for streaming, you can do that here. Usually, I will use audio track one for streaming purposes. Now, on recording, you're actually able to have more than one audio track be output to your video file. And that's important if you are going to be editing it later in say a video editor like DaVinci Resolve 16, because what that allows you to do is to manipulate the sound levels or add audio filters to each track individually. So you can have one track for your game audio and one track for your microphone. For your microphone track, you may want to increase the volume so it's easier to hear, or you may want to add something like a noise reduction filter later on. So by keeping your audio track separated, it becomes much easier easier to edit it in the future. With that, you need to use a recording format that actually supports multiple audio tracks. So you can see that certain formats down here like FLV do not support multiple tracks per recording. And I believe it defaults to FLV. So what you would want to do is change that from FLV to, to MKV. Um, MP4 also supports multiple audio tracks, but the problem with MP4 is that if you use MP4, as it says here, and you're recording and it doesn't complete the recording, then you can lose the entire video file. So that's why generally I'll use MKV because it supports multiple audio tracks. And if you don't have the chance to stop the recording properly, you can still keep whatever video information you recorded. So that's really important. Now, generally MP4 has better compatibility with video editor programs and the like. So what you can actually do is remux the recording later on from MKV to MP4, which means you change the file type. Uh, it's really easy to do that with an OBS. So really there's no downside. I would just recommend you using MKV here. Now on the audio tab, you can set bit rates for each audio track and you can also give them a name. So if I wanted to be proper here, I should say that track one is my streaming track and track two, I believe I'm using that one for microphone and then track three, I could call desktop audio. If you want to increase the audio bit rate, you can. 160 is usually gonna be plenty. Sometimes I like to upgrade it to 192. So we could do that right there. It won't make too much of a difference if, if you're just doing standard recording. So that's all well and good. The other thing you need to do for your recorded files is to select which audio tracks are actually gonna be output to your files. So I have this set up as track two and track three will be output to the file. Track one will not. Track one is only used for streaming. The reason for that is that since streaming can only have one audio track, you need to feed both your desktop audio and your microphone audio to track one so that that can be output to streaming. But we don't want it to be combined for the recorded video file. And that's why tracks two and tracks three are strictly for the recorded file that gets saved onto your computer. Okay, so if you've done all that, you can move out of the settings menu. And now we need to go to the audio mixer and customize which tracks are feeding to which audio channels. So if I click on any setting gear for the audio devices in the mixer, I can go to advanced audio properties. And here what you'll see is a section called tracks. You can see which audio devices are being fed to which tracks by default all six of these tracks would be checked. So you just need to uncheck the ones you don't want that audio device feeding into. So in this case, I have desktop audio and microphone audio, both feeding to track one, so they can both be in the stream. And then track two is only for the microphone, so that I can keep that separate from the desktop audio. And then track three is for the desktop audio. So if I have a game recording or whatever, and I need that audio information, it's still there. It's just separated from the microphone. And then currently I have no need for tracks four, five, six. So I just uncheck those. And that's essentially all you need to do to separate your audio channels. So before we wrap up the video, I'll go ahead and open DaVinci Resolve so I can show you the benefit here where you can actually have different audio tracks. So really quickly here in DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to bring in a audio clip I had recording using this multiple track setup. So this is where tracks two and three were being output to the video file originally as an MKV file, then remuxed into a MP4 file. So if I drop this onto the timeline, you can see that it actually has multiple audio tracks stored within one file. So we have the microphone audio up here at the top. And then later on, you can see some desktop audio recorded down here below as well. But because we went through the trouble of separating those tracks, it's really easy to manipulate them individually. So if I wanted, I could mute the entire audio track to the desktop audio but by pulling on this audio volume bar and bringing that down all the way. That's one thing we wouldn't be able to do without 
also muting the microphone audio if we didn't separate the tracks. Of course, if you're doing video editing, there's many other ways you can manipulate your audio tracks, but hopefully just in that really simple example that really demonstrates how useful it is to keep your audio tracks separated. But aside from that, that's pretty much gonna be it for how you separate your audio channels inside of OBS. So they're recording your different audio devices on different audio tracks and that you're separating your stream audio from your audio that gets recorded to a video file. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future video content.